It's time for the Mike Gray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House in Eddy Street Commons. The Mike Gray Radio Show is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. The Mike Gray Radio Show is also presented by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Xfinity, First Source Bank, Great Clips, Papa John's, St. Joseph Health System, South Bend Orthopedics, and O'Rourke's Public House. Also sponsoring tonight's show is Primrose Mishawaka and Legacy Heating and Air. Now, let's go live to O'Rourke's Public House for the Mike Bray Radio Show. Here's your host, Jack Nolan. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. Nice crowd here crowd. tonight. You're competing with the women's game. That costs right. us a few each week, but folks have come on out here uh, to hear the head coach of the Fighting Irish, who are 1-1 one one in the ACC this week. A critical big win over Wake Forest at home. Tough loss at Miami, but in this league, it's tough to win in this league. One-on-one one weeks are good in conference play. You know, one and one weeks, when you get into what our February slate looks like, it's not the end of the world, especially because you went 6-3 and three the first way around. So thrilled with how we played against Wake Forest, and Austin Burgett meant yeah. so much to that. What a great story, a senior kind of being reinvented. Frustrating night in Miami last night. The only thing good about Miami was the weather. Okay, after that, it, it ended after that. And I got to give Miami a lot of credit. They played great, and they're a heck of a team. We had a real hard time guarding them. We got in some foul trouble and never really could get into a rhythm. But you have to have a short memory in this league, Jack, because we got Carolina coming in here Saturday, and then you got to have another short memory Saturday night because we've got to go to Clemson yeah. and play there Monday. This is a really challenging stretch for us, but it's exciting for our group. Clemson probably the most improved team in the ACC, but – I got to talk a little bit more about Austin Brigette because I got to be honest with you. I can't ever remember a young man in, in his situation. The story's well known. He was a rising right. star for you as a starter when the heart thing acted up again at Florida State. And the train kept going and kind of left him behind. Yep. He hadn't started since the Carolina game at the end of your first year in the ACC. Mm -hmm. And you put him in the starting lineup, 14 points, five rebounds, two steals, a block, or one steal and a block, and I mean, it's just a terrific performance by him. You know, it's a great story, and nobody deserves it more. You know, Austin was elected captain by his teammates. He hasn't played much for us, but yet his attitude is great. He's helped the young guys. I don't know if there's a more respected guy on our team because even though he's not playing, he's got a great attitude, and he's helped the young guys, and he's a team guy. So when I mentioned that we were going to put him in the starting lineup, it was unanimous. The body language of our guys were like, yeah, he deserves that. He's been practicing very yes. well since Christmas. There's kind of been a new confidence about him, a new, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to worry about things. And he's been really hard to play against if you're in a white shirt. So we figured let's have him join the white shirts. And I thought he really answered the call, made shots, defended, blocked the shot, got a rebound. He was pretty good in Miami, too. Mm -hmm. You know, he got in some foul trouble. We played a little bit differently. You know, I like the fact that we're a little older when he's on the floor. And the, the teams that we're playing in this stretch, starting last night, are old. So having some experience out there is helping us. Well, and it was a close game in Miami for most of the first half. And one of the reasons was they jump out to a 6 nothing lead. And A.J. hits a three-point shot. Yep. So that was huge. You talked about his confidence. At the beginning of last season, you worked really hard to get him into the rotation. You gave him a lot of chances, yep. and he just didn't play that well. He never made more than one three before, made four against Wake Forest. So he was a different player. I had never seen that A.J. Burgett on the floor before. Well, you know, last year you had the Bonzi Colson phenomenon happen, and then you had Pat Connaughton in that spot. And Pat was going to play 37 minutes a game. And, and so he kind of got left behind. Again, his attitude has always been great. You know, I've always been, so you know, I, the guy deserved to have this happen to him because he's been a team guy and been a great attitude. He's a great example for his, for his teammates. And, you know, like I looked out there on s Sunday when we started him, I said, you know, we're starting two seniors and three juniors. I like that a little better, you know, given who we're going to start playing in February, the better teams and some older teams. Of course, it was great to get Demetrius Jackson back. And after missing a week, 14 points, eight assists, seven rebounds, six steals, flirting again with a triple-double. I mean, that says just how valuable he is to you. He is, and I thought he played a little 
cautiously, rightfully so, on Sunday. I even think last night in Miami is still kind of getting back into rhythm and playing long minutes and, and really going for it on that leg. Uh, but we seem to be doing okay. There's not been any setbacks with it. And uh, I just think he'll get more and more comfortable and back in a rhythm with each day. I'm not going to use the term good Zach and bad Zach because Zach is averaging a double-double. He's putting up a double-double just about every night. That's hard to come by. But there's solid battling Jack and there's Zach and there's great battling Zach. And you got great battling Zach against Wake Forest. The level of intensity and physicality that I don't think even last year in the tournament I ever saw him carry on through 40 minutes. Yeah, I thought he was fabulous. And, you know, I think there was, I think there was a big part of it was Austin in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Austin, Burgett, AJ, is his roommate and you know those two guys now are talking a little bit more about leading the team together playing together I thought it really picked up Zach Steve and Demetrius uh, to have AJ on the court out there one of their older guys with them but uh, and you know I think even last night Zach tried to battle I thought he got you know the short end of the stick on some calls that kind of had him sitting next to me for a while but, um, you know, what has he got? 12 double-doubles, 11 double-doubles? He's second in the league with 12 yeah. double-doubles. I mean, you know, the guy, the guy plays hard. He plays with great emotion. He's been better at keeping that from getting too crazy emotionally. I couldn't be more pleased with what this guy's doing for us. He wants to win badly. He's become a bit of a leader. I didn't know if we'd ever get that out of him. I gave him a ball in my office today. I always laminate a ball for the guys that score a 1,000 points. He hit that maybe a week or 10 days ago. So I gave that to him. And, you know, we talked a little bit about – we didn't talk about the here and now. We talked about his career and the ups and downs and lefts, rights punching a punching a uh, uh, the support and breaking his yeah. hand when he used to get to him you know he's grown a lot he's really grown a lot i'm very very proud of him and he still has a lot that he can do yes. he plays like he did against wake forest he's going to win some games and you made a good point uh, in your press conference today you don't need great zach every game you just need him every other game and you'll be fine how many more great zacks do we need you know i mean you know it's i i, I need a few more and we're trying to get to that Selection Sunday. We we're in a pretty good position at six and four. Our RPI is thirty two. Our strength of schedule is thirty. It's only going to go up. We have a chance for some great wins. Um, I think the league is going to get a good number of bids this year. So we just got to, you know, keep positioning ourselves and 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 having short memories after big losses or or great wins and moving on to the next one well i did like the way your team battled and cut the score last night to a respectable 79 70 miami 15th in the coaches poll 17th in the ap poll they were coming off a loss at nc state but i want to throw some some numbers at you you won points in the paint 46 30 you had 17 offensive rebounds you won points off turnovers you won fast break points you shot 50 percent in the first half we're still down 12 at halftime you shot 40 six percent for the game these numbers normally add up to a win so what went wrong last night you know i thought you know zach's second foul and him not being able to play it got away from us you know we didn't get any offensive rebounds in the first half we got most of them in the second half and he does such a great job of getting his second shots but uh, we we weren't good defensively we we couldn't keep their physical drivers in front of us we were not we were very poor in our ball screen defense something we came back and addressed today and are trying to get better at it's something that i think we got to continue to come back to every day but that end of the floor driving us they drove us too easy just way too easy they had a freshman go off he had a great night i didn't really expect him to go off like that you know he was down in the scouting report a little bit don't get me wrong he's a very good player But a guy like that had a career night, and, you know, if that's the guy taking most of the shots, we were going to kind of live with that. But he made every one of them, to his credit. And you never know about that stuff. Ask Wake Forest, because that's what Austin Burgett did to them. He wasn't even in the scouting You You never know. It's that similar. Anthony Lawrence is the guy you're talking about. He's a freshman. Had a career-high 18 last night. He had scored a total of four points in Miami's first eight ACC game so there was every reason not to not go out and, and press him to let him shoot the ball you know I mean you're not going to let guys just line it up but he he's he was a little bit of the fifth option and you're living with that and but he made every one of them to his credit and you know a, a game like that would be interesting to watch I bet it jump starts him and he's a real confident player moving forward and you talked about your practice today I was there you spent the whole practice 
on defense. Now, guys are playing offense against defense, but the whole emphasis, you were talking about ball screen defense and position. And another key foul that I thought hurt last night was the early blocking foul on Steve Astoria right at the foul line, yeah. where I thought he was in just about perfect position. And, and you're not the only team that struggles with this, but a lot of nights when the officials start calling that, I think guys are wondering, what do I have to do? Because nobody moves his feet better than Steve Astoria, and I thought he was in position. You know, the... Um and I've said this before, the new rule is makes it hard to guard really good drivers. Miami has old, physical driving guys. And with the new rule, you know, you, you get a hit here, it's automatic, so you tend to back up, and so there's driving lanes, and so we played some zone, and that helped us for a while, but then they drove our zone a little bit. And that's one of the things we tried to do more offensively is drive the ball because it's hard to deal with with the new rule. And it's hard to defend you guys as well. Uh, which game you were 28 for 32 one night shooting free right. throws because you drove the basketball. So uh, lots of things to look ahead to. Uh, we'll preview the Carolina game in the last segment, but something's happening before then, and it's actually very powerful for your program. It's the third time that ESPN is bringing their game day show to Purcell Pavilion, and I mean, there's 351 Division I teams. You've had that show, and it's only 10 weeks a year. You've had that show three times since you've been here. You know, I think, um, I hope our fans understand what that means. You know, we, we just don't get it because it's Notre Dame. You know, your program has to be in gear. I think it says a lot, and I try to explain that to our players today. The reason we get it is the respect that our, that our program has nationally, and certainly when we get in here, our fans light that building up, and we certainly need them to be off the, off the hook on, on Saturday night. Um, first time we played Connecticut, Jack, and, uh, we, we lost a tough one. But we had a, we had a 45-game win streak the first time we had game day. 45 wins in a row. And that was back when we had green seats with duct tape on them <laughs> in the old well, building. I remember Remember that. those? Oh, I, and some, so did some parents of recruits. I noticed that, too. So M that's changed a lot. Also, maybe game day likes coming here because we have given them the best game day game in the history of game day. Five overtimes against Louisville. I don't know what the heck we do for an encore. They'll all be around tomorrow. I guess they want us to put on another show. But uh, to have it again against a great program in North Carolina... Um, and to have our fans be able to embrace the energy and the excitement. I think it's great. It's just great for our program, great for our fan base. Doors are going to open at 9 a.m. I've already watched some of the videos that they're planning to show to the fans. It's going to be student giveaways. Uh, they've got the highlight film of the five overtime, which oh, I yeah. enjoyed uh, watching again, and I'm still amazed. I did that game solo. I'm still amazed my That's voice right. lasted the entire time. But, I mean, what somebody asked me the other day, uh, a student was interviewing me and said, well, what's my best moment as a broadcaster? And it's, it's got to be that game. I mean, I've never been through anything like yeah. it. I was a little ticked that ESPN didn't nominate it for game of the year because I didn't see any other basketball. And I got more feedback. Billis was listening on Sirius. I mean, everybody was watching and listening that game. And I think it helped you, too. I mean, Rick Pitino's a great coach. But you saw intense Rick with the vein on his <laughs> forehead screaming at his guys. Right. And you're basically saying, hey, man, could it be any more fun yeah, than right, this? And I think right. that's how you had guys. Garrick Sherman comes off the bench, has a spectacular five overtimes, hadn't played much in a couple of weeks. Your guys just stayed loose and, and won a game that will go down. Maybe it's the most dramatic in Notre Dame history. It, it's, if there's a more dramatic game, in our, it's right there with any of them. And, and uh, you know, it's funny. That summer I had people come up to me kind of sheepishly and say, hey, coach, uh, I left. But I came back, and they let me back in, you know. So they said, Coach, I left, but they did let me back in. Well, Grant scores, what, 12 and 42 seconds. There were so many twists and turns. So maybe we got another show like that, but uh, we play a great team in Carolina. I think they are at one level in our league. And then the rest of us, if you look, are punching the heck out of each other, and it doesn't really matter. They lost a tough one Monday to Louisville, but they come at you in waves, and they get down the floor, and they've got a lot of bodies to throw at you. And it is a great, great program. It's, you know, it's always an honor to play them. I, you know, one of the things that has helped us establish ourselves in this league is last year we had great success, and even the first year, against Duke in North Carolina. The Blue Bloods of the league kind of uh, that's an endorsement for us now we beat them twice last year in the state of north carolina and i'm sure they remember the championship game because they kind of had us on the ropes and we came back and took it from them now the last time they were here they put it on us in our first year they thumped us good here so uh, uh you know it's 
great matchup for us. I don't know if a lot of people give going to give us a shot, but um, we've been interesting in those situations. Well, you know they remember not only because of what you did in the tournament to win the title. I think I forwarded the picture to you. Somebody texted to me of the uh, home of Roy Williams, his hometown, and somebody you put a Notre Dame jersey on the sign. I saw that. So you know that they remember it. And I think they are. Well, you and I talked last year. They've got six McDonald's All-Americans. They did last year. I haven't counted it up yet this year. I think it's six again. And he was using so many guys, and there was no chemistry. Well, he's using nine, ten guys again. But this year, there's a chemistry yeah. that wasn't there last year. Yeah, I think they've really found themselves. Paige obviously sets a tone for him. Uh, you know, Bryce Johnson, I think right now, would be the player of the year if yeah. the voting ended today. He's fabulous. But they got three other big guys they rotate through. Kennedy Meeks is back. They pound you with size. They really change ends. The one thing we can not do is run up and down with them. They play the fastest as anybody in the league. We cannot get in a up and down game with them. We must control tempo. And I do want to point out, you spent a lot of time before the Miami game working on controlling their transition game, and you did do that. Yeah. That's not what hurt you. You won fast break points. Yeah, we've, we've, been, we've improved our transition defensive stuff. It's some of our ball screen stuff, and sitting in a stance and keeping a driver in front of you is something that we must continue to work on. And the one thing about this team, and I reminded them last night when we got in this morning at 2 a.m., yeah. I said, you know, we're going to be a group that has a chance to get better right up to the ACC tournament. So embrace that. We're going to come back tomorrow. As a staff, we're going to try and figure out better ways to help you on the defensive end, and let's come back and work on it. But our transition defense has improved. It will be thoroughly tested Saturday evening. We've got questions for Coach, and we're going to get to them right after this first time out. The Mike Bray Radio Show presented by TireAct.com live from O'Rourke's Public House. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. Making our community brighter, it's what NECA electrical contractors do every day through community involvement efforts like sponsoring the Notre Dame Basketball Youth Experience, which gives area youth groups a trip to Purcell Pavilion to see Coach Bray's Fighting Irish in action. The NECA contractors and electrical workers of Local 153 preparing Michiana for a brighter tomorrow. Mike Thompson's here from Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Coach, we have twin daughters, one at Notre Dame and the other at North Carolina. Oh, boy. Our whole family is in town for the game. Any chance you can play for a tie for our <laughs> sake? Mike Thompson. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we can't do that, Mike. We got to... We, maybe we'll tie in regulation. Yeah, you've done that. And by the way, Louisville's here a week from Saturday. Yeah, they so, do come back. And fortunately, that's not a nine o'clock start. That's so. a split family right there. There's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of junk being talked over oh, the next forty eight hours. Great deal. That's awesome. Doug Buell, as always, is here for Michigan yep. City season ticket holder coach. I've noticed that the free throws are quite a weapon this year. Is that why the team seems to be driving the basket more? Yeah, well, you know, again, try to take advantage of the rule. And you know, I was. I was, we, I think we were all frustrated with how we shot free throws in November and early December, but I think we're in a little better rhythm right now, and I think we have three guys in the top ten. Bastoria's leading the ACC. Um, Demetrius is up there, and... Um, and free throws, Bonzi. And Bonzi. Yeah. Bonzi. we got three guys in the top ten of the league. Brandon Liss is here. I guess... We ought to be at Clemson by the time the Super Bowl kicks off. It might be practicing, right? We will uh, practice it. We'll be watching the bowl in Greenville, South Carolina. At, you know, we're down there at the Westin, and we're going to practice here and get in there about five and let the guys watch the game. Brandon Liss wants to know who you want to win the Super Bowl. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, I always loved Peyton Manning. I was a Baltimore Colts fan, so I rooted for the Indianapolis Colts. But, you know, Cam Newton's an Under Armour guy, and, mm -hmm. you know, we're kind of – we're kind of uh, joined at the hip with Under Armour, so I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit back and be brain dead for a couple hours and then watch Clemson film. You know, me and Connaughton are Boston area guys, so watching, uh, no. watching that game last week, the Denver defense gave oh, Brady good. no time. They just crushed him, but there's a little difference. Cam Newton's not Brady. Cam no. Newton can move. He can so move. So that's going to be interesting. I think it's a great matchup. It It'll is. be neat. It's a, it, what a what a great day. You know what? The Super Bowl is almost as good as March Madness. Almost. It's almost as good as March Madness. It's getting there. Maybe in time. Jerry Liss is also here. Coach, oh, it's a good question for this show. Do you think one play or one foul can change a game? Yeah. You know, a game is fragile. Yeah, yeah, it can. No question about it. Been on both sides of that, too. <laughs> 
All right, Josh F. from Boston Spa, New York. I was not going to ask this question, but Coach said I have to. What's your favorite thing about Jack? Cooley? <laughs> Do that, yeah. That's right, must be Cooley. No. Oh, don't answer that. Don't this answer that. This guy's a pro. We've been, uh, we've been together, what, 16 seasons? 16 seasons. 16 seasons. Had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun. He's a pro. He, he keeps me loose. I keep him loose. We... Uh, We've been, I've been very yeah. lucky. I've been lucky to work with you, man. You're a pro. I, you know, I know you got the Emmy. I mean, you know, I, got, I mean, I you know, know, I, I mean, I don't bring that up, man. <laughs> I didn't expect we're that. Proud that of, we're proud of that. That was, was well deserved. That was fun. Well, and basketball was part of that package. So well deserved. That was a lot of fun. We told you about uh, game day. So I do want to let folks know a little bit. The uh, again, Purcell Pavilion, it's free, opens at 9 a.m. Sports Center will be doing live hits throughout the morning. So you want to show the rest of the country and you want to take part in recruiting? Well, show recruits what a fun place Purcell Pavilion can be. Band's going to be there. Cheerleaders are going to be there. Palm squads will be there. We've got some great videos, including a recap of that Louisville game that lasts about three minutes. It's going to look and sound great. Students will receive donuts and other giveaways, and one lucky student will have a chance to win $18,000 for making a half-court shot, and you have 18 seconds. It's not just one. You can fire up right. some more. Uh, dorm attendance competition, $1,000 Meyer gift card. Uh, any students have a ticket to the game, receive early entry to attend the game day show. For folks who do not have a UNC game ticket for students, and there was a lottery, it's a sellout, 10 students with a ticket will win a ticket during the game day show. Now you have to be present to win that. Uh, the game itself, a gold out. Bring out your gold clothing. You're going to wear the gold uniforms, I guess? We must be if there's yeah, a gold that's out. that's what I figured. <laughs> you, he, you can't get into the minutia of that. Mm -hmm. Thousand students receive a gold replica jersey tank top, and fans will receive gold pom-poms. Third straight sellout, fourth of the year. We thank you. Louisville's also sold out. There are some tickets for Miami yeah. and NC State. Only four home games left. Well, I mean, we're down. We're getting down to it. And I'm excited for our fans. I mean, they're going to be great in there Saturday. It's an honor to host College Game yes. Day. We are honored to have them here. As I said, it's like a circus starting tomorrow. There will be a lot of people around. And my new theme this yes. year is to embrace the circus. We've got 25 people that are going to commentate on the game and sideline reporters, and they want you after timeouts, but it's great. And we'll be the show, and I know our fans will be out having fun. And come over come over in the morning because that's a neat uh, experience. You know, what you should do when, when they get the time for you to appear on the show at that set time, send Digger out. He may just take my place anyways. <laughs> no, he'll probably try to lock you in the office <laughs> and go outside. No, no, no question. question about that. VJ Beecham is our guest tonight. We're going to get him up here right after this timeout. The Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. Five. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. Nice gathering of Irish fans here tonight. Please welcome V.J. Beecham Jr. from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I know they're watching down there in Fort Wayne. And see, so you can see your highlights. We've got you back on the monitors here uh, at O'Rourke's. Best season of his career, no question. Started all 22 games, 11.8 points, 4.2 rebounds, 18 block shots, third in the ACC in three-point percentage, fourth in three-pointers made per game. I don't think he's had a bad game this year. You know, we said going into this season as a staff quietly, you know, for us to emerge and for us to go back to the NSA tournament, VJ would be one of the very, very key guys. And he has delivered from day one. Plus, I think right now, in the last two or three weeks, He's kicking it into another gear, especially what he's doing on the offensive end. He's just not a shooter, putting the ball on the floor, getting to the basket, improved defensively, rebounds for us. Just such a key guy for us. And always great to see a guy get better and get confident, and that is V.J. Beecham. And you were so solid in the Syracuse loss, and I know people forget losses, but you not only had a career-high 22, you grabbed a rebound in that game. I don't know if you remember, you came in from the left side and just skied over everybody and just ripped the ball away. I mean, you've always had that athleticism. And now, are you, what is it about the fact that you're kind of willing to let it all hang out now and just take off and go after the ball on defense and offense? Uh, I just think the confidence that the coaching staff has given me, you know, uh, just to let me go out there and play my game. And it's really uh, it's a great to have their support and my teammates' support. And, you know, they really they told me before the season that they were going to be relying on me this year. 
and I've just been trying to step up and, and make plays to help us win. I know before last season, of course, as a group, you went to Italy. Now, only one player went to Europe this summer, and it was you with the East Coast All-Stars, and you, you played some real talented teams. How did that help you? Yeah, it really helped out a lot. We played the Nigerian national team and the Chinese national team, but, you know, to go out there and play great competition and really, you know, try to expand my game and work on the things that the coaching staff had talked to me about in the offseason really helped me out a lot for this season. Talk about how playing European competition, especially, I mean, on your tour, that was more about bonding. I don't think you you may have played a couple of good teams. You also played a bunch of folks that didn't give you a real run. But he did play. He played against, now you play against some guys who had either played or were playing in the NBA and played against national teams. Well, we, we used this trip with the East Coast All-Stars probably for five, six, maybe seven years and sent someone over. We always try and pick someone and send someone that we need to make a big leap, like going from maybe coming off the bench to a starter and a guy that's going to be a key guy and we need him to score double figures and it wasn't even close that DJ was that guy. This is the best competition the East Coast All-Stars have ever played against and he was the best player. He put up the best numbers. So I thought it really jump-started him coming back knowing, all right, I'm confident, I'm ready to be a starter, coach is expecting me, me to be a starter. I think it really helped get that momentum going. You know, Notre Dame's a national school, but right now Notre Dame is starting three guys from Indiana. What does that mean to you? <laughs> yeah, it's a good feeling, you know, to be out there with guys that I've pretty much known since like my freshman year of high school. That's when I met Austin Burgett and Demetrius, and for us to be out there starting together, you know, it means a lot to people in the state of Indiana. So. And what does that mean for you, too? Because you recruit nationally, but it's certainly nice not to have to take the two-hour flight to drive for half an hour. Is, has that raised, again, the, the visibility in high schools of this program? Well, I think the state has been, you know, very good to us, been good to me. You know, it's something that we wanted to concentrate on. Notre Dame previously didn't do as much in this state, but we have felt it's very important to recruit the state of Indiana. I'm the longest tenured coach yes. at any of the Division I schools. I know the high school guys in this state as good or better than anybody. And the kids that have come to us, for the most part, from Indiana have had really good experiences and good careers. So guys in the state are more willing, like, you know, they see Beecham playing well. They see Chris Thomas, Heron Goaty, Scott Martin playing well, Demetrius Jackson. Let's go there. Your image of Notre Dame when you signed, I mean, you'd visited, but you hadn't played here. How does what you thought Notre Dame would be compared to what it has been for you? Pretty much right on. You know, I knew it was a great university, and it would be a place where I could really explore myself as far as on the court and off the court. And it's really, you know, been great for me. I'm in the Mendoza uh, College of Business right now, so... You know, that's something that's great for me uh, for life after basketball as well. Still in marketing? Yep. So what do you yep. hope to do with that? Uh, hopefully I could become an agent. You may not know the name, Roosevelt Barnes. He's my he's my cousin, so. Yep. Well, that, that's certainly good to know. He's going to be my agent. Your agent? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, get him above 2%. He's oh. done. He has done a great job. I mean, as we know, the Mendoza School is oh. number one. And it's tough. And it's amazingly challenging. And he has been just dogfighting his way through it. I couldn't be prouder of what he does academically, too. Well, and you've never really talked about it much until the beginning of this year. You talked a little bit about it. But whenever I tell people this, they look at me bewildered. But the 2.0 rule here, two-semester eligibility, where you can't slack off. You can't have a bad fall. You really can't have a bad spring. At least you have summer coming out of the spring. But this is a two-semester sport, and you've got to get a C average. All the I, I kid with people, you know what a C- minus is at Harvard? It's a graduate. I mean, but here, they sit you down. Talk about how hard it is to keep it up here. For example, you're not coming back from that end-of-the-month road trip. You're going to play a Wake Forest, yeah. get down to Florida rather than fly back on early morning Thursday and then get back on a plane on Friday. But one of the reasons they've let you do that, I've heard this through the grapevine, is that Pat Holmes, the academic advisor, has to go with you. Not that they don't trust you, but to ensure that guys are buckling down and studying during that period of time. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because, you know, we got laid back last night and I think everybody was in class this morning and me and Austin Torres had a quiz to make up today. So to, you know, like you said, juggling both, you know, it's tough at times, but this is what we signed up for. 
you know, so it's, it's great for us because we know it'll pay off in the long run. And I know ideally you try to avoid early morning classes, but like when you're in Mendoza, when you're in a major, at Notre Dame, they don't structure it around the athlete schedule. You got any 8 a.m. classes or 9 a.m. classes? Yeah, I had a 9.30 this morning, so I got to bed like 3 a.m. last night and then had a 9.30 this morning, so. I feel bad. I That's got, the real deal. I got up at 9.30 today, yeah. so I feel really, really bad. It is the real deal. You're also an only child. How has that impacted you? Uh, I say it definitely has its positives and its negatives. You know, some people might say, oh, he's spoiled. But, you know, around the house, it would only be me to be cleaning up and, you know, things like that. <laughs> and nobody to help with the shores. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, a little bit uh, a little bit of both worlds. Did you mow the lawn, too? Yep, I still mow the lawn this summer. Even when I'm at home, I still cut the grass. So. All right, I was still mowing it when the folks still had a house. <laughs> We've got a question from the audience for you. And, of course, you get to run the live version of the Fast Break coming up right after this timeout. The Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. We're back in the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. Irish fans, it's time to start thinking about tires. Our friends at Tyrec.com, presenting sponsors of the Mike Bray Radio Show, have what's right for you, headquartered just a few minutes from Purcell Pavilion. Their experts know a thing or two about driving through winter's worst, and when they're not driving in it, they're on their test track or maneuvering around on the ice at a local hockey rink for, for winter test testing, tire testing. Get to know the experts at TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Actually, they live on that side of town. They were out there like a week ago. They had the sprinklers on the track in the freezing weather, and they're driving cars around. Wow. There. So they don't mess around. Renee Buell is here, season ticket holder. VJ, what is the loudest away stadium that you have played in, and does the crowd ever affect you, or is it easy to block it out when you're on the floor? That's a good question. Uh, as far as the loudest, I'd definitely say Cameron Indoor Stadium. But as far as, like, the best atmosphere to me, I think, was at North Carolina State last year mm -hmm. because there was, like, 30,000 people in there. You know, they had a big <laughs> hockey arena, and it was just a great atmosphere to play basketball in. And, I think NC State's the most underrated home court in the country because nobody talks about it. And when you get there, it's an absolute You know why I brought up NC State? Because he had the put back. The tip he in. had the yeah. put back. I know. <laughs> get us to OT, man. <laughs> I, I was going to say that and see if you bring that up. Clutch. All right. Favorite all-time movie? He got game. First car you ever drove? Uh, Cadillac STS. Get up early or sleep in? Get up early. Who's your role model? My parents. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? Uh, well, you kind of spilled the beans. I'm a marketing major. I don't know. Why would people be surprised about that? What do you think they would expect you to listen to? Uh, I just don't think they would expect me as a basketball player, you know, to, to still be trying to be in the college of business. So. Let's try one thing. Put, pull the mic down a little closer. I think that might help us a little bit. What do you think? All right. I got to take care of my man here. He's good. Hard, hardest working guy, Bob Henning, our engineer. Favorite NBA player? Kawhi Leonard. Favorite thing to do when relaxing? Just listen to music. Favorite sport to play other than basketball? I love playing baseball growing up. See the pacing of this, the veteran guys, they just, I'm going to get through it. all the questions. Favorite part of practice? Scrimmaging. Worst part of practice? There isn't one. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Brown, don't, take, don't take that as a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Best part of your game? Shooting. Part of your game you need to work on? Defending. Which is better, knocking down a long three, blocking a key shot, or grabbing a big rebound? Uh, knocking down a three. Favorite class you have taken at Notre Dame? My sports marketing class. City or place in the world you'd like to visit? London. One person you would like to meet? President Obama. One thing you always hear from Coach Bray in practice? Can't get sliced. <laughs> All right. The annual, the, the nightly, weekly money question. Assistant coach, who is most like Coach Bray. Rob Bolanis. But I want to say you're like Coach Bray, too, Jack. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, Coach. <laughs> I don't believe so, How am I like Coach Bray? Smooth delivery. Smooth. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh good. He's, he's a veteran. He's, he's a veteran <laughs> guy. We're going to have him back more. We're going to uh, have him co-host. Can you imagine him as a senior on the show? Uh, when he graduates, I mean, next time I don't have a color guy, you're going to be the delivery. analyst. You're going to move right at Tori and watch out. <laughs> Tori and <laughs> snuck up to Jordan. Jordan lets me get crushed in NCAA games. We're going to have an opening in a couple of years. Smooth delivery, Jack. Player on the team most like you. That's a tough one. Uh, 
Can I pass on that one? Yes, or say nobody. nobody. You're a unique individual. Yep, I'll go with that then. Best nickname on the team and who has it? Big Baby, Bonzi, Colson. Best player to room with on the road? Steve. Toughest Notre Dame player to guard? Demetrius. Player on the team who has surprised you the most this year? Uh, I just say... Austin Burgett, you know, just how, how he stuck with it and kept, you know, his mental right, and that's been, been big for us. I don't know if you're here yet. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. 34, I've never seen anything like it. Best defender on the team? Steve. Best leaper on the team? Austin Torres. Best dunker on the team? Myself. Worst dunker on the team? Chad Holtz. <laughs> Best dresser on the team? It's a good one. Me. Worst dresser on the team? Bonzi Colson. Best singer on the team? Zach. Worst singer on the team? Bonds. Best comedian on the team? Bonds. Best moment at Notre Dame so far? Won an ACC title. Absolutely. And Mm -hmm. our uh, end of fast break question this year, freestyle swimming race, one lap. (laughs) Who wins, you or Coach Bray? I got to give it to Coach. He's got me there. He's got me when it comes to swimming. Of course, you don't swim every day. Exactly. And he does. (laughs) I got to ask you one other thing, because we can't get Austin to do it on the show. But every practice after stretching (laughs) starts with the unique Austin, whatever that is. You guys do seem to embrace that. What was your reaction when you heard that the first time? I was like, what is this? Like, what is this sound? Is this somebody on our team? Is somebody in the arena? Like, what is this? I, mean, I don't know what it sounds. I'm trying to think of the animal. There's only one guy that can do like, it. Yeah. I can't I won't even <laughs> That's try. Close. Just, That's close. That's close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it echoes through the... It's like he's on a speakerphone. Yeah. Now, when he doesn't do it, do you look at him? You're like, hey, well, you must not have his juice today. We need it, Torres. <laughs> now, does he ever do it in the huddle before the game or in the locker room He does it game? all the time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> to the point where, yeah, we got it. Yeah. That's enough, Austin. <laughs> BJ, great job. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Me. I job, think baby. this is one of my future color guys. <laughs> when, he, when he's done with his playing career. He's great. We're back with more of the Mike Bray Radio Show live from O'Rourke's Public House right after this timeout. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. Let's just take a quick look at the standings here. Carolina, 8-1 in first. Louisville, 7-2 and in second. You play those two teams in the next week. Virginia's right there, 7-3. and three. Clemson, 7-3. and three. You play them Monday night. Pitt, then Miami, and, and then you guys. There's a log jam in the upper half of the ACC. No, there really is. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I do think North Carolina kind of is playing at one level. And then the rest of us, there's even some teams with two wins, three wins. Well, I was going to bring that, that up. That, you know what, I mean, they can beat you any night. We're very fortunate to be at 6-4 and four right now. And you're in survival mode right now to, to get to D.C. and with a, with a solid record. I mean, B.C. struggling. And, and yeah. So yeah. Th- those are games that you needed to win. Wake Forest is 1-9. and nine. I don't know how, the way they're playing yeah. so well. NC State's 2-8. and eight. And they just beat Miami. Right. Georgia Tech's two and seven. You you play them again, and they'll be ready for you. Even Florida State. I thought Florida State would be in the top four, and they're five and five with the size they have. Right. And I think they're starting to play better right now. Florida State got off to a tough start. I do think this is the year the league gets eight NSA bids, maybe more. I really think this this has the feel of that old Big East that we left not long ago where we were getting eight and nine bids, and one year we got 11. <laughs> well, and I think this is a nine or ten bid league. I don't know if you'll get that far because the other conferences don't want that generosity going to one right, conference. Right. But certainly you bring interest, you bring matchups, and uh, the ACC also tends to play a tough schedule. Tough, and, and the non-conference looks good as well. So that's a look at the standings. We're going to come back and get Coach's keys to the Carolina game right after this final time out on the Mike Bray Radio Show. It's another opportunity for a Notre Dame moment. Saturday, North Carolina ranked number two in the AP poll, but number one in the coaches poll. So as far as we're concerned, they're number one. And seven number one teams have gone down at Notre Dame in the history of Purcell Pavilion, including in 2012 when you knocked off Syracuse. Well, they're coming in here off a loss, so they're going to be ready to go. And as I said, I think transition they get down the floor so fast. They want to play really fast. We don't want to play that fast. We'll pick our spots. We're going to really have to have to rebound the ball. You know, our guards are going to have to help us rebound because they have a number of big bodies that kind of pound on you. 
Uh, but it's going to be a great atmosphere. Hey, man, we got nothing to lose. Um, last time uh, college game day was here, it was magnificent. We talked about the Louisville game, and I know our crowd always energizes us when we're here, and I think it's going to be one of those all-time nights in the building. Well, and part of the foundation of your program, you have preached since year one that the key to conference success is how you bounce back. And right now, yeah. you have bounced back successfully 11 straight times after a loss. And this is the ultimate bounce back, because yeah, now, now you got the number one team in the country coming in. But... I do like the habits that we've developed where a loss, we come back, we're ready to play. And that's a, it's a great uh, identity to have when you're in a league like ours. So you only focus on Carolina, but we do. I, it can't get more challenging than then having to turn around Sunday afternoon, fly to Clemson, and take on what I do think is the most improved team in the league this year. Totally agree with you. They're really guarding. Um, they're physical. Uh, you know, they're, they're, and they're playing great in Greenville. Forget little John Coliseum, which is being refurbished. They're playing way better in Greenville. So uh, they're a confident basketball team. We got our work cut out for us. We got a lot coming at us here over the next four days. And it's an NBA-style atmosphere. They've got the ribbon board. And as a matter of fact, Irish fans will remember, you played a heck of a game yeah, down there did. against Duke in the NCAA tournament. So it's the same building. Nobody in this team's going to remember it. But it, it's, it's going to be a tough weekend. And if you can get out of this one-on-one, -on -one, you've Ooh. done pretty well. It'd be pretty good if, if we could do that. You're if right. If you get 2-0, we're going to be doing handstands on the show next week. We go 2-0, and, and I'm going to retire on Tuesday. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> You'll be riding high. And again, we will. game day, folks. Gates open at 9 a.m. And also, for the fans that like to say, we're the best fans. Got to be there. This is when you got to show up. We need us. We know you'll come to the game, but you need to show everybody around the country just how great the right. fans can be. And it's also, it's a hoot. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be a fun day, a great buildup, and, uh, you know, it's what it's all about. We're honored to have them there, and we're ready to play well. And Digger was a longtime member of that cast yes. before retiring. I can guarantee you. He'll be in the building, and he's going to be involved somehow. <laughs> I have a feeling I agree with that. <laughs> Folks, that'll do it. Thanks for coming out. We'll be back here Thanks. again next Thursday night. The Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. Good night, everybody, and go Irish. The Mike Bray Radio Show has been presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. The Mike Bray Radio Show is also presented by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Xfinity, First Source Bank, Great Clips, Papa John's, St. Joseph Health System, South Bend Orthopedics, and O'Rourke's Public House.